This is the rotor of the motor. And this is a very simple one winding DC electric motor or generator. If you turn it, it'll generate the current too. These are generally low voltage, high current. Don't have much torque, but they wind up pretty good in speed. And what I'm using for bearings are these two spheres that are magnets. And the shaft of this rotor is just pointed and it just sits right in there. Floats right in there. It's just touching on one of the spheres. This one over here, it looks like it's sitting in right now. This one, there's a little bit of a gap. But it holds in there pretty darn good. And I'll wind it, let it spin up now. Very quiet. I'm not even sure if you can see it spinning, but it's winding up pretty good. Maybe you can hear a little bit. I can hardly see it spinning, but it's really going. I guess I'm just going by the sound of it, but it still sounds like it's picking up RPMs. Smooth running, that's for sure. High speed motor, that's for sure. I tried smaller spheres for these magnetic bearings, but they didn't work at good. They started wobbling. And I think it has to do with the relationship between these collars. These are steel collars, and they're magnetic too. And I think they need to be about the same size and diameter. And, you know, if I open this up, and put a bigger gap in there it wobbles a little bit more still pretty smooth but it does wobble a little bit more so I just keep it just tiny gap smaller than that that's barely touching right now If I switch the wires, switch the direction of the current, it'll spin the other way. Let's see, I'll cross my wires. I think I need to hold it underneath here. There you go. And I'll show a diagram of the construction of that rotor next. This illustration shows the construction of the rotor. What we have here, we have two cylinder magnets with a quarter inch hole through it where the shaft goes through. And on each end is a washer. 
and these are placed in opposition to each other. So we got north to north, or it could be south to south. But anyways, they're placed in opposition to each other on the shaft, and they have a, a washer on each end. And these other four magnets that I have shown in there are ring magnets with the inside diameter equal to the outside diameter of these cylinder magnets and so they fit flush with the end of the cylinder magnet and up against this uh, steel plate so it bends the magnetic field around from these uh, cylinder magnets it bends it around so they just go directly back to each other what this does is concentrate the magnetic fields right in between these rig magnets very concentrated right here. You could also do it without the rig magnets, just put the washer up there and it would still concentrate it more between the edges of the washer. But these rig magnets on here, it concentrates it more. So we just got it in between right here. It's very concentrated. And that's where you put the wires, you know, one on each side. So we get the motion of electricity cutting through those magnetic lines of force. One will go one way and one the other way because the current is coming in and then it's going back out when we put the leads on there. And this is all conductive right through here. They have to be touching to get good conduction for electricity to flow. It just flows right through the rotor. And that's how that works. And with the rotor stuck in between these two sphere magnets, it just kind of floats right in there. This this rotor weighs a third of a pound, and it's you know these magnets hold it in there really good. I can I can actually lift that piece of wood up right on there because because it's locked right in there. You know, look at it's not even touching that ball magnet but it's holding up that whole piece of wood so it's pretty stable for this size if it's something bigger it would have to be a lot bigger so this was just an interesting project I wanted to take a look at and put together and see how it works and it does work pretty good I don't know how much application there would be for such a motor like this it would have to be something high speed that didn't require much torque but it does work, and it's pretty simple to build. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.